Hi, this is Superboo3. Today we are continuing our playthrough of Sherlock Holmes Crimes and Punishments. This is the second part of the Abbey Affair case and um, we were just going to get Toby to track a scent for us. Come on Toby, we need the best nose in the British Empire on this case. Search, Toby. It looks like I'm just going to follow this scent. I had, I was a bit suspicious when I did see this tool shed earlier. The intruders entered the shed for some reason when they were making off with the silverware. I really do think that the wife came up with the story because she read in the paper about the three burglars. The scent leads to the well. I should check it. The intruder's trail is lost behind this wall. The criminals left the house through the French window. They walked to the shed, then across to the well, before fleeing by climbing over the wall. I wonder why they chose such a winding route. Okay, now to investigate the places Toby looked, so the shed first. This hook might be useful. Small gardening tools, nothing of great interest. Bags of seed. Some empty bags were recently moved. This old suitcase sounds hollow. It must be empty. Next thing to examine is the well. There's something glittering at the bottom there, but how can I reach it? I want to put the hook on the bucket. Silverware. This is hardly a coincidence. The Brackenstall coat of arms. It appears that we have found the stolen silverware. Yeah, imitated robbery. Okay, lastly we're going to check the wall, the which was the last place he looked. Lost behind this wall. Okay, after a little investigation and a deduction that the silverware was still around and things were a bit suspicious, I think we should start talking to Lestrade. What do you know about Sir Eustace, Inspector? What was his reputation? A charming man went sober but an absolute demon when he was drunk. In such moments, he was apparently capable of anything. Why, once he splashed fuel on Lady Brackenstall's dog and set it alight. Another day, he threw a decanter of wine at Miss Wright's head. Hmm, the alcohol seemed to madden him. To the point that we were forced to intervene several times to avoid a scandal. Inspector, I have recovered the stolen silverware. You are a wizard, Mr. Holmes. And where is it? In the garden well. Excuse me? Unique, isn't it? Rather absurd. What is the point of stealing silverware and then throwing it down into a well? Perhaps it was used as a temporary hiding place. Or simply the thieves wanted to get rid of it. It is up to us to solve this mystery. The inspector's tell with violent behaviour, I believe. We found your silverware, Lady Brackenstall. It had not been taken very far. Is that true? I am very thankful to you, Mr. Holmes. Sir Eustace's doctor speaks of his violent behaviour. Yes, Sir Eustace was an extremely violent man. A detestable human being, to be more precise. It is true that he once threw a decanter at me, and all because I dared to stand up to him in defence of my mistress. Sly devil. God forgive me that I should speak of him so now that he's dead, but a devil he was, 
if ever one walked the earth. We met him only eighteen months ago. She'd only just arrived in London. Yes, it was her first voyage. She'd never been from home before. Wonder with his title and his money and his false London ways. If she made a mistake, she has paid for it, if ever a woman did. She doesn't have any friends here, so it was specially hard for her. We found your mistress's silverware. Oh, that's good news. You really are as clever as they say. Indeed. This definitely looks like they um killed him. Hmm. I'm going to go with this acquainted with a sailor. I'm not really sure we've got concrete proof, though I know Rock of Gibraltar was mentioned on the photograph. Oh yeah, okay, so we don't expect it to be a deadly accident. Because um, now we suspect it's murder. What's this? Okay, yeah, I can work with that. I've just gone back to Baker Street to see if we can form some analysis on the rope. Let us see how the rope was cut. The fibers at the end of the rope are smoothly cut. Let us try to find out what tool was used to cut the rope. The fibers from this cut appear to be different. This is pretty cool. Oh, there's a knife here, let's try that. If I cut the rope with a knife, it matches the original. Sharp knife and knotted rope then. What does this tell us? If it's Peter Cairns again, I'm not going to be happy with letting him off the first time. <laughs> okay, I'm going to examine the archives for Rock of Gibraltar in 1893. Oh, here we are. Here it is. The shipping company, the Adelaide Southampton London Line, and its address. Interesting. It must be the place where they keep the records, including the one for the crew of the Rock of Gibraltar. I think that if you pretend you're from Scotland Yard, they'll give it to you without any problems. But I have another solution. I'll call in the specialist. Uh, so we're going to call Wiggins. Wiggins, could you come upstairs, please? At your service, Mr. Holmes. I need a register, my young friend. If you could borrow it, there will be half a guinea for every one of you. I need the crew list of the Rock of Gibraltar in 1893 and their current employment. I'm straight on it, Mr. Holmes. Do you really think they'll find it, Holmes? My secret police is better than the Yard in many ways. Here it is, Mr. Holmes, but we can't take it back. It's too risky. Put it on the table. I'll take care of it. Good work, young Wiggins. This list shows the senior officers of the Rock of Gibraltar, on which Lady Brackenstall and her maid made their voyage. Lady Brackenstall does not know anyone in England. This must mean that someone on this list is our mysterious visitor. 
And these are the lists of the senior officers of the Adelaide Southampton London Line ships. Let us find out who was in London upon November the 7th. This officer is still at sea, therefore he cannot be involved. This officer is still at sea, therefore he cannot be involved. So I'm just matching up the names on the left to the names on the right. This officer was on a ship that sailed half a month ago. He wasn't in London at the time of the crime. This officer was on a ship that sailed half a month ago. He wasn't in London at the time of the crime. Mr. Jack Crocker was in London upon the date of the crime, and he is due to depart in two days. This officer is still at sea, therefore he cannot be involved. This officer is still at sea, therefore he cannot be involved. Captain Jack Crocker is our mysterious visitor. He was the only one around at the time of the murder. Okay, so now we know Jack Crocker is our man. Well, our most likely man. This Crocker, do you think... It would be interesting to meet him. Our young friend should be able to find him. Wiggins, could you find a way to bring this Captain Crocker here to us? Here? Holmes, that could be dangerous. No problem, Mr. Holmes. Mr. Holmes, I was informed that you were looking for me, and I'd like to know why. Yes, it is important that we talk. You will soon understand why. Weirdly, this guy looks like Jude Law. Uh, that's the guy who plays Watson in the new films. Why are we going down to his legs? You are acquainted with Lady Mary Brackenstall, are you not? Yes, I think I do remember her, from when I was first officer, but I still don't see... It seems your relationship went beyond that of mere passenger and first officer. How dare you? Indeed, how reckless a feeling is love, particularly if one is prepared to commit a murder in its name. Explain yourself this instant! You are aware that the murder made the headlines of the morning press. You read the newspaper report, but to your dismay, found it much fabricated. Once you learned that I wanted to see you, you came straight away. You needed to know what I had found. You... and what do you know? That evening, you were with Lady Brackenstall, despite the danger. I'm not afraid, Mr. Holmes. Besides, all of this is just guesswork. You would be right. If there was no evidence. What then? Lady Brackenstall was tied to a chair on the night of the murder. And it was you who tied her up. You call that evidence? Yes, because it's a sailor's knot. Yes, as she was tied with a sailor's knot. Your handiwork. So, it's a sailor who's done it. That proves nothing, Mr. Holmes. I'm not the only sailor in London right now. Your theory is flawed, anyway. On the night of the murder, I was aboard the Sharp. I was supervising the repair of a porthole. At night? It was an emergency. There was a leak. You can ask the ship's carpenter. He can confirm. I'm sure that he can. Perfect. In that case, we have nothing more to talk about. Good evening, gentlemen. Holmes, what should we do now? Would you like to check his alibi? No. There is no doubt that these men will testify in his favour, and there will be no way to check. So, what then? So, we must work with what we have. We have all the puzzle pieces. 
Well, from what he said, we know that he knew her. Yeah, I think Crocker did it. Okay, I do think the captain is the killer. And I am going to absolve him because... I think the woman was in a lot of danger and it didn't look like the police or anyone was going to help. And yeah, that's what I stand by. That this wasn't something that was out of malice and yeah and I think the whole self-defense thing works Wiggins could you ask Mr. Crocker to come here again please right away why did you make me come here again Mr. Holmes it is over I know that it was you who killed Sir Eustace Brackenstall what I know because of the height at which the rope was cut the knife used was a sea knife the knots were sailors' knots, and not least the sheer force that was put behind the killing blow. And because you are the only one who knows Lady Mary Brackenstall in London. And because you love her. It's true. It is time for you to tell us the whole truth. I admit that I loved Mary madly from the first day that I met her. But I never did come to visit her. For I believed that she was in a happy household. When I talked to her maid who told me everything, I was insane with rage. I was due to set sail for six months away. I wanted only to see her again. But it turned into a damnable nightmare when he barged in. He dared raise his hand to her. He! He was not even worthy of licking her boots. Oh, I regret nothing. I admit I killed a monster out of love for her. She will forgive me if she is able. Lady Brackenstall already forgave you. She said nothing. Mary! But that makes her an accomplice as well as her maid. It places her in danger yet again. Mr. Holmes. You would not have managed to protect her. Till I die, do you hear me? Here is a letter that sets everything clear. And it is the one that should be disclosed to the police. I am the only culprit. Mary had nothing to do with it. Now it is time to end this. <coughs> no one messes with Sherlock. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Please forgive me, Captain Crocker. I wished only to test your sincerity. And your words and deeds have far exceeded my expectations. See here, Captain Crocker. We'll do this in due form of law. You are the prisoner. Watson, you are a British jury. Captain Crocker, the evidence shows that you acted without premeditation and used reasonable force to protect an innocent victim from her husband's brutality. Your devotion pushed you to attempt to kill yourself in order to protect the one you love. Now... What say you, gentlemen of the jury? Not guilty, my lord. Vox populi, vox dei. You are acquitted, Captain Crocker. So long as the law does not find some other victim, you are safe from me. Mr. Holmes. It is a great responsibility that I take upon myself, but I will give Lestrade an excellent lead, and if he can't avail himself of it, I can do no more. Come back to your lady in a year. And may her future and yours justify us in the judgment which we have pronounced this night. Holmes is awesome. Inspector, I'm afraid that the murderers have escaped us. What? Do you mean to tell me that you failed? Never thought I'd live to see the day. I mentioned the murderers, not the case. It is obvious that the crime was committed by three criminals who cannot be the Randalls. You really think so? You only need to find a gang of three thugs wandering around. I can trust you to do that. If they exist, I'll catch them. You'll find someone, I have no doubt of it. Goodbye, Inspector. Yep, I'm happy with the decision. Um, and that was clearly the right conclusion with how Crocker reacted to the whole thing. So, on to the next case.
Oh yeah, and by the way, he, he clearly was trying to kill himself when I said no one messes with Holmes. I just meant he can deal with someone with a gun. Oh, right. There's my uh, personality ranking, ranking for that one. So next time, the case will be the Kew Gardens drama. Thanks for watching. Bye.